Well, hello, thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Claire Holding and I teach art classes through 3andMe. Today we're going to be hosting an in-home party, so welcome to my home. At the same time as teaching art right now, I have three active boys, a cutest golden retriever and a husband, so please do excuse if there is background noises or if you can hear the washing machine or tumble dryer. This is an active home and it's all going at the same time. So please join me for the next half an hour or hour or however long it takes with your family, sit down to paint and just get away from it for half an hour. I hope you are all doing really well, that you're all healthy and um, managing to reconnect with each other. So to, you should have received your art kits this week and within those art kits will be the basics of everything you're going to need to create this project and I'm also going to go through some of the extras that you may have in your home if you want to go off on your own tangent and please do use your own imagination but if you want to follow mine you are welcome to do so. So let me go through what you found in your art kit this week and your little goodie bag left at your door. You will have and I'm going to bring you a little bit closer Okay, right. You will have found one big egg, a big bunny, a little bunny. Uh, you'll also have, let me show you, uh, you'll have two hearts, a daisy. You don't have to use it if you don't want to. There is tape on the back and all that does is keep the little center on the inside. You've got a sponge and a reusable brush. Both can be reused and washed. You've also got the three bases which are going to be your stands at the end and you can paint these too. And then you've got your colors. Most of you will have black and white and then um, a third color um, and those vary according to what you picked. You Along with your kit you're going to need a couple of supplies from your home. These are a paper plate, a paper towel, you're going to need possibly a nail. I was going to include these but I was worried if you didn't know it was in there and you upended it and the next thing you were standing on it in the carpet wondering where did it come from. So I didn't want you to hurt yourself. So if you want you can use a nail. You don't have to use that. Masking tape or washi tape and that's only if you want to make stripes. Water, just regular tap water and glue. Now I like to use this Turbo Tacky Glue which is available on Amazon but you can also use wood glue, hot glue or super glue and that is just to glue your embellishments onto your bunny and your egg at the end. I am going to show you how to make an egg with stripes. Now it is two-sided so you can do the two sides in different colors. It's totally up to you. Um, I'm going to just show you how to do that just so that you know how to do the stripes and the dots. You are also going, I'm also going to show you how to make a bunny like this. And for the, the little pants at the bottom, you can use any color you want. You can use the color that was, the extra color that was in your set, or um, you can mix one up and we're going to go through that as we go along. You can make your bunny two-sided if you want to and do different sides, different faces on the front and the back in case you want it to be double-sided on your dinner table. Um, but I also have another bunny here. Oh, look what I did to this guy. I did the front like this and then I put the cutest little cotton tail on the back. So you could do that as well if you want your bunny to look like it is the same little person or piece. And then we have, I'm going to show you how to do this. I really like the look of having a cement kind of effect on my bunny. And I, I will show you that technique. So I'm gonna have a gray bunny, a white bunny, a white egg, and then I'm going to decorate them with various different colors. Okay, there we go. Now, the other thing I just wanted to say is, um, you each have about three colors. Some of you will have more than that, but the good news is you don't have to just use the colors that were in your kit. Um, you can definitely branch out from here. And I did a little sample for you all to show you that if you didn't have acrylics in your home, so these were all the colors in acrylic, 
uh, and they turned out quite bright. And that is what you can do with the colors that you received. However, because you don't have all the colors in your kit, and sometimes mixing is a little bit um, intimidating if you are not an artist, you can also, look at this, use crayons. And you know you've all got those crayons on the bottom of your school bag, so dig those out because the colors are super bright and lovely as well. So you can use crayons. Otherwise, those markers, if they're not dried out yet, those make pretty good colors too. And then the last one was just using pencil crayons. So this project can be made beautiful no matter which colors you use. So don't feel intimidated if I am using colors that were not in your kit or if you don't have any other acrylics, that is also okay. You do not need to go into the shop just to buy them. Use what you've got. And if you've got something that I didn't mention and you're worried about it, please just drop me a line and ask me and together we'll make it happen. Um, okay, let's get going. So we're going to use the white paint. I am going to paint all of my surfaces in white first. Not only is that going to give me a nice basis for the color that goes on top, um, it's also going to make the colors pop. All right, so you don't have to do this if you don't want to, but um, you're welcome to if you would like to. Now, because I'm not going to mix anything here, I'm going to use the color straight out of the little container but if you are going to mix, then you really should decant some onto your paper plate. All right, so we have to dip our brush into the water just a little, not too much. Okay, you don't want to dilute it too much, otherwise it's going to be too see-through. If you want to whitewash, then you can definitely use more water. All right, so I'm just going to smooth the color onto my egg. Okay, and now if you want something that is a little bit grungier, a little bit more see-through, you could use more water. All right, so I'm just going to smooth that on. And you're going to paint both sides, right? I'm going to show you one side for now, just so that I don't take up too much of your time. And if you are needing longer time for this, then just hit pause and come back to it, but please do come back. All right, there we go. Finish off my egg. Now, if you want to, you could do this in, um, in pink or blue as well. All right, or you could just start off with white and then put your color on top. All right, so that is my bunny, my egg done. Okay, and I did get a little on the tabletop. Don't tell. All right, there we go. All right, and that one fell over. Okay, let's do the next one. All right, and the other fun thing is that these are meant to be a little bit uh, um, shabby chic, so it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, it just has to be cute and it just has to be fun. That's the most important part, is that this is going to be fun. All right, let's paint that. This wood is so nice because, or this board is so nice because it actually takes on the color very well and it dries super quickly. Okay, so you see there, I wanted it to be a little bit grungy. So it doesn't have to be perfect. All right, there you go. Oh, let's do this last little chap, what do you say? All right, now you can use any colors you want and you can even do effects like this. So if you just did like a dabbing effect, it almost looks like your little bunny has fur. But remember, we're gonna make this one gray and I'm gonna show you the technique there as well. All right, let's get that going. Okay, you can even cut these out of cardboard if you want more because you're having just so much fun. Right, okay, so that's one side painted and look, I still have just about all of the paint left. All right, don't throw it away. You'll need it again at some point, especially if you're gonna do another class with me, we'll use it. All right, so that is the white. If you want to add a little bit more color, 
because it's a little bit too light. And definitely do that too. All right, there we go. Okay, and remember you can pause it if it takes you longer than me. Okay, all right. So the color does dry very quickly. Remember to put the cap back on so it doesn't dry. Look here, it's already dry. So if I touch it, it's already dry. Okay, all right, so we've got our egg. We're going to put stripes on our egg. So for that, already dry, we're going to use masking tape. You can use washi tape if you want to. In fact, you know what looks pretty too, is if you have all these cute washi tapes in um, different patterns, and you can just make stripes with your washi tape. And I have some here. Oh, excuse me for disappearing under the table. But you could just use a selection of different washi tapes, right? So you could do stripes with washi tape and just leave the tape on. That's another option as well. But I am not going to do that. I am going to use masking tape. So you peel off the end. And I'm terrible at peeling, peeling tape. I always find that I've spent half the time digging around the tape trying to find the end. Okay, so just position it onto your egg. There we go. I wanted to show you one other thing. This is another option. It is harder to do, but you could do something like that, right? Like an ombre type egg where you do zigzags or chevrons. But that is going to be a tougher one. You can take a uh, heavy paper and cut a zigzag into the heavy paper and then just keep moving that down your egg so that you can get the different lines. That's pretty cute too. Okay, now less talking, more action, I think. All right, go. And I'm going to make some stripes. Go. I'm going to do about three or four thin stripes. Okay, there we go. All right. So I did mess up here a little. I'm not parallel to the bottom, so I'm just going to reposition them. And remember, it doesn't have to be perfect. Now you do want your paint to be dry before you use tape. Otherwise, what happens is the paint lifts when you lift the tape. See, it has lifted there a bit, but that's all right. Okay, and then I am going to give this chap here some pants or a skirt. It could be a skirt, could be pants. Uh, so just gonna add some tape. All right, make sure that your tape is parallel to the base of your bunny. and then this is my egg all right so actually I need to have one more stripe here you can use sticky tape for this as well if you want to all right now this here is a blending sponge for makeup so kids this is where you get to use your mom's blending sponges all right, and you don't need to use all of them. I have reused them, so you can wash and reuse. I am going to show you how we're going to do the gray first. So you're going to put a little bit of black onto your paper plate, not too much. Oh goodness, I've got my fingers into it, so try not to do that as well. Okay, oh, I'm gonna need to wash my hands. All black hands now. Oh, there we go. Got some black on there. And I'm just gonna wash my hands quickly. Please excuse me. I'm back. I washed my hands. I had black paint all over. Okay. And if that happens to me, it's okay. It can happen to you. It's all right. It's all washable. Just make sure you wash your clothing fairly quickly if you did get it all over you. All right, so what I have done as well, so that I didn't have to wash my hands again, is I have ended a little bit of white, black, and blue onto my paper plate, 
right. So I'm going to blend in a little bit of gray here. So I'm going to take with my blending sponge, let me just show you, a little bit of white, a little bit of black. I'm just going to mix up a little bit of more white. Okay, do you see that? Making a light gray here, too dark. There we go. All right, do you see that? Okay, so I'm going to want to put some gray onto this little guy. So the way that you're gonna do that is you're just going to sponge, sponge the gray onto the bunny. Okay, can you see that? To just sponge him now so you can see the effect and it doesn't need to be neat you actually want this to be a little bit uneven because it gives the illusion of texture okay go now I'm going to show you in a minute you can just keep on going and you can do you can do different shades you can go darker from the edges or darker on the bottom and you just sponge, sponge, sponge. Okay. You can add more color if you want to. Now remember, you are going to be doing it on both sides. I am going to show you one side just so that you don't have to hear me for the next whoever knows how long. But you get the idea. I'm gonna add a little bit more black just to give him a little bit of shading for her go and if you find that you've gone a little bit too dark you can just add a little bit more of the light okay and I'm gonna finish blotting my bunny I want to I want him to look like he is made of kind of a cement texture look here okay can you see he's a little uneven but I kind of like that look all right, you don't have to do it that way if you don't want to. If you want your bunny to be even, just use the brush or just blot him in the same tone all over. Okay, so that is going to be that little guy. Um, this is gonna be my egg. I'm gonna give my egg some gray stripes. So I'm gonna use exactly the same blotter. Now, remember that your paint still has some little some liquid in it unless it is bone dried on yesterday um, you don't want the paint to run so all you're going to do is blot blot gently over the line okay so you're going to blot 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 and you know what we should do here how about we make it a little bit of ombre should we do that i think that's a good idea i'll show you how okay so there you go you can see I've done the first line all right now I think I'm going to do the next one a little bit lighter so I'm going to go back onto my plate and I'm going to use the same gray but I'm going to add a little bit more white into it so it's going to be a little bit lighter you know what another fun thing to do is here is if you have a little bit of glitter paint add glitter paint in because that will make it sparkle who doesn't like sparkle right so gray is such a boring color for kids I know um, you guys can use blue you can use pink you can use yellow you can use green okay I'm gonna go one shade lighter even there we go and then the lightest what might even be fun is if we do the top in a little with a tiny little bit of color to match color that I'm going to use on the middle bunny's pants. Okay, so I'm going to put a little bit of blue into my gray over there. Just a little, it's just a hint. Okay, this line needs to be a little lighter. Add a little bit of white in there. Also, just, just rough blotting. Doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. And you can also mix colors, right? So you know how to do that, right? Look here. Okay, so I've just got my stripes there and they're all a little bit different. They're not all identical. 
let's not forget to do right at the bottom. I almost forgot to do that. Even though that part is going to be inside the stand, you still want it to look neat. Okay. Right, so I'm going to let that dry. There we go. And then we're going to do the bunny with the pants. How cute is that? So because I've I've done gray, I've done some blue inside of the gray. I'm going to use the same sponge exactly as it is. I'm just going to make sure that the majority of my gray paint is wiped off. Now at this point, if you want to do bright pink or a brighter color or anything else like that, go and wash this brush, uh, this sponge. It does sponge out really well. And dry it with a, with a towel and then it is ready to use again. I'm going to use teal. Okay, and you can always do a test run on your paper plate. There we go. Can you all see? I hope you can. There we go. I'm going to blot some pants onto him. And I really like it to look a little bit grungy, like kind of antique y. There we go. And you can use any color you want. You can even color this in if you want to. There we go. All right, you see, it's kind of a little bit grungy. It's not perfect. You can do it perfect if you want to. As close as possible anyway. It doesn't have to be absolutely perfect. There we go. Right, so now we are going to let these dry. You are going to go and do the other sides. There we go. Um, I'll see you back in about five minutes. I'm going to give you time to finish this up while I go and wash my brushes. I will see you back in about five minutes. Bye. How are things going on your end? Have you washed your brushes? Have you painted the bases of both of your bunnies and your eggs and on both sides? Because remember, they need to look good on both sides. So I have washed my brushes and my paint is dry. So once you get to this point, what you're gonna do, and this is so satisfying, you take off the masking tape, all right? So you peel the tape off on all of your designs. Okay, there we go, there we go. And then you will be left with something that looks Okay, so I've got my stripy egg, now we didn't do anything to him, and my bunny with the pants. Now if you did want to do the other side, what you would do is turn him over, and you would have painted it, him white already, and then make sure that you follow the line through. Okay, so you want to follow the line through so his pants are at the same height in the front as they are at the back. So, I wanted to show you the other guy. You see like him, all right? His pants, his belt has shifted, but look, his pants are on the same line at the back and at the front. Okay, so I'm gonna put him right there. Right, the next step is that we're going to give all these guys some dots if we wanna put dots on. So for that, you're going to use your nail and you're going to use the flat the flat end of the nail there you go all right and you're going to dip that into your paint and you you want a fair amount of paint so that you don't have to push too hard so let's do the pants first what do you say let's give him some polka dot pants so I'm gonna put them there I'm going to dip my nail into the white paint okay and I'm gonna come a little closer and all I'm going to do is add a dot Okay, and then I'm going to go to the other side because in case you want it to be symmetrical, you want to make sure that you've got enough space between all the dots. If you want it to be random, just go for it. Okay, so let's put some more dots on here. I think I'm going to do three in the top and then I'm going to do two in the next line and then I'm going to do three in this line and I remember a quarter inch at the bottom is going to be covered by your base 
So you don't have to go all the way down if you don't want to. Okay, so I have a spotty bunny now. All right, there we go. And for my egg, what I'm going to do is, how about blue dots? Let's do blue dots. So I'm going to take the same nail, dip it in the blue paint, okay, and then I'm really just going to do some dots in here. And I'm going to do these one randomly, so they're not going to have a defined pattern, just random dots all over. Okay, just, and you can do big ones, you can do little ones, all sorts of little dots along your egg. Okay, there we go. Alright, so I have dots all over my egg. Now I see that the masking tape has taken off a little bit of my colour and that's not a problem because especially if you're new to this, it may happen and don't be distressed. All you're going to do is touch it up. So I want to show you mine just so you can see. Alright, do you see here the masking tape has taken off some colour? I really should have not been so impatient. I really should have let it dry, <laughs> but I try to be quick. So you have, if you don't have rush on your side, rather let it dry all the way. So all I'm going to do is use a little bit of white paint and I'm going to paint in between. Now, what you can do, if you wanted to, is you could paint these, you could color in these stripes. So you could have a rainbow egg if you wanted to. There you go. Okay. All right, fixed up my egg. We want it to be pretty. But it doesn't need to be perfect. It just has to be fun, right? Okay, so the egg's done. Now I want to show you how to make the eyes. Eyes is very important because, and you can try this on a piece of paper. If you draw a shape and you, if you put eyes onto the shape and the eyes are very far apart, see what that looks like. If they're very close together, see what that looks like. You can even have them at different heights if you wanted a really cute bunny. So we're going to use our nail again. So I wanted to show you my originals just so you have an idea of where we're going with this. We're going to do eyes like that. Okay, so we're going to do three dots. Okay, let me show you on the other one. Also just three dots. Okay, I'm going to use the same nail. Very economical here. I'm going to dip the nail into the black paint. Okay, can you see? And then we're going to put one, two, three dots. Okay, three dots. All right, you can do them lower if you want to, or higher, it's totally up to you. Whatever you want your bunny to look like. Same thing on our gray bunny. I'm gonna give him one, two, three dots. Okay, go. This one's a little bit thicker, so we can just blow on it. To dry it faster. Okay, there we go. And while you wait for that to dry, you can paint your hearts and your daisy. Now, I left my one heart on this one here. I just left the heart plain. I thought it looked nice. It was just a neutral color scheme. But you can make it pink if you want to. I made this one pink. All right. And then you saw my big red heart for my big bunny okay so he has a nice big red heart and the daisy you can color any color that you want now I'm just going to show you in case you don't have all the colors if you have your daisy like this you can pop the center out the masking tape comes right off okay so now you have your two pieces so I just wanted to show you that it does work with a pencil crown can color the center in yellow if you want to. I just wanted to show you in case you thought it may not work. But look, it actually looks really good. And 
this is just one broken yellow crayon or pencil crayon that I found in one of my boys' bags. So it, even it got its day. You see how cute that is? I don't know if you can tell. Nice and yellow. All right. Okay, my daisy is going to be white. So I'm just going to use the same white paint. There we go. Just paint the daisy. All right. And you do want to take your shape apart. Don't leave the center in. Otherwise, it'll be difficult to keep the center uh, separate in color. Okay, there you go. There's my white daisy. And you can do it pink if you want to. Now, I did have a little oh, a bit of red on hand. I wanted to show you, especially if you wanted to make your skirt or your pants on your bunny in pink. All you would do all right now you shouldn't double dip but i'm going to just for saving on time i'm going to dip my sponge brush into the red okay i want to make pink so i'm going to add the red to my palette i'm just going to mix up a little bit of pink hold on let me show you can you see there Okay, I've just mixed up a tiny little bit of pink. You don't need a lot. These hearts are very little. Okay, and then we're just going to color in our heart in pink. If you want a little bit more red, definitely add more. Okay, and even crayon will work well for this one. You can even use crayon for this one. Or you could cut out a heart shape. You could trace around wrapping paper with your wooden heart and then cut out see just a cute little pink heart and this one i'm going to do a little bit darker red okay so there we go and again i want mine to look a little bit shabby okay All right. now, in general you don't double dip but i am going to just to don't So now I have two hearts. We have to let them dry fully just so that we don't smudge our fingers when we put it together and we need to wait for the eyes to dry. So I am going to wait for mine to dry. You don't need to watch my paint dry. We'll meet back in about five minutes. Okay so just hit pause, let it dry and I'll see you back in a sec. Right my paint is fully dry i'm going to show you how to put whiskers on your bunnies and just embellish them a little bit so by now i hope you've gone and got a snack got some water that you're comfortable we're almost done right to draw a little face on the bunny you're just going to use a regular pencil you don't want it to be too bright if you really wanted to you could use a sharpie but I just find it's too stark but it's totally up to you all right I am going to use pencil and I'm going to draw three whiskers one two three on this side and one two three on that side okay there you go can you see those little whiskers and then I'm going to draw a little line down the center. Okay, can you see the bunny? All right, isn't he cute? I'm going to do exactly the same thing on my little gray bunny. I'm not going to give him this little part. I'm just going to give him whiskers. I'm going to do one, two, three. One, two, three. Okay, you can't, they're not over the top loud, but they're cute and they're there. All right, it's time we gave our bunnies a little bit of sparkle in their eye. Now you don't have to do this, but if you would like to, you're going to use the sharp end of your nail. You're going to dip it into your white paint, all right? And then you're going to just gently touch it onto the eye, Ooh, if you can see. You're gonna just gently touch it onto the eye of your bunny. And make sure it's on the same place on each eye right they need to the shine needs to be in the same area you don't want to have one shine up and one shine down that won't look right let's do that with our little gray bunny as well 
Okay, we're just gonna give them a little bit of shine, just with the tip of our nail. All right, so they've both got shiny eyes, they're happy bunnies. Okay, and then we're going to close up our paint so it doesn't dry out, so we have enough for another project. Oops, there we go. If you want to, you can use some raffia. I'm going to tie the raffia around my bigger bunny. Okay, I'm just going to do a bow. And for this, you can also use ribbon, silk, uh, wool, or you don't even have to have anything at all. Okay, there we go. Okay, so my bunny is dressed. He has his bow, and I'm going to just slip a heart into the bow. It'll be pretty stable like that. And then if you wanted to, you don't have to do this. I am going to add the flower onto my big egg. All right, but if you wanted to, instead of putting the heart into the belt of your bunny, you could put the bunny in the, the daisy into your bunny's hair. That would be cute too. Or if you wanted to, you could tie a little ribbon around the ear. So there are so many different possibilities as to what you can do with your bunnies. The last thing you're gonna do is take your bases. Now there's one base per, per wood cut, right? The biggest one is where your egg is going to fit into. You can just slot it right in there. There you go. You can slot this one. Oh, sorry. Let's slot this bunny right in there. Like that, with his heart. There you go. You could even put, put a fresh flower in if you wanted to. And here is my last bunny. All right, there they are. Aren't they cute? Now, if you want to, you can use a little bit of glue to glue your hearts and daisies on permanently, or you could just slip them in there so you can take them out at any point and redecorate. So that is the tutorial for today. I hope that you had so much fun, that you enjoyed spending this time with me. I really enjoyed teaching you. Please share your photos and like, like thumbs up or tag photos of um, you doing this tutorial together with your families. I would absolutely love to see your creations and how you're all doing. I hope that you keep well. Stay home, stay well, make lots of art. I have a couple of free videos coming along and I'm working on a couple of more kits. So all feedback is always super appreciated. I have nobody helping me put this together. It's just me and a camera. And um, so if there are mistakes, please forgive. Just wanting to so much reach out to you while you're all at home. So thank you for joining me. Take care until next time. Bye-bye.